Hey everyone, welcome to another video and in this video I'm going to talk about how I lost my stem extension. I haven't really talked about this to anyone before and uh, this is the first time I'm even telling my parents so they are going to know through this thing. So I was in a, a really bad state last year once when when my stem extension didn't go through so I'm going to tell you that story. Only a few people knew about it. Uh, Simran knew about it, my uh, roommate Himanshu knew about it and uh, a couple of people from HR knew about it. So let's go back a little bit. Let's go to 2017 when I joined Purdue for the first time. When you study at a US university, you have to apply for a certain number of visas or you have to apply for a certain number of like job authorization from USCIS and from the university and that's what we are talking about here. So there is a CPT that is curricular practical training, there is OPT that is optional practical training and there is STEM extension that is science, technology, engineering and math extension. Uh, STEM extension you only get when your course is STEM approved. Uh, OPT and CPT you get regardless of your course. So in 2017 I joined Purdue for my internship first first year that was 2018 summer i apply for my cpd applying for cpd the process is really easy it's only through the university you don't have to submit any of the documents to uscis so it makes the whole process much easier usually the designated school officer who gives you i-20 who authorizes your i-20 they'll help you fill out the documents if you're missing some document they will help you out so the process is really easy i'm going to do three links from uh, from different universities on how the process goes so during this summer when you're applying for your cpd for internship it will be useful for you i go through that process that's really easy and then i decide i want to do a co-op that is a four months or a semester long internship that is also going through the university and not through uscis so that also goes through very easily and i'm going to leave link in description of the process on how it goes from different universities so that you can check it out so cpd goes through like really easily and i'm all good every time i get work authorization for like cpt and co-op i get a new i-20 from the university and uh, during my summer internship and a co-op i get two i-20s for that and one thing which i'll tell you save all of your i-20s whatever i-20s you have up until now save all the documents we come to opt now that is optional practical training after my graduation i decide that i want to work in the us and i interview for a bunch of companies i get into one of the companies that is wilming construction as soon as i get the offer i go ahead and apply for opt one of the things which uscis did great this year is made the whole process of opt applying or opt application online Earlier it was offline, earlier STEM extension was offline as well. So what had happened was you have to submit all the relevant documents and then you send it through postal services. The process is fine. The only thing is like nobody helps you with that process. Your uh, International Student Services Office or OISS or whatever you want to call it at your university, those guys help you, but they'll not watch each and every section of your I-765 form and sometimes students can mess it up i don't know it has happened before one of my really close friends brother who was studying at asu last year his opt got denied for some reason and at the end of the day he had to go back so there are cases like that so you have to make sure that when you're filling up your opt application it's all solid and it's ready to go so i filled in the application put it through uscis i get an approval from my uh, iss that is international student services at video that you're good to go i put in the documents in 2019 when i applied for my opt it was crazy during that time because a lot of people were applying us admissions were at peak that time U.S. graduation was at peak that time so there was just a lot of people graduating and uh, uscis was really backed up Usually it takes like two months to three months to get your EAD card. Mine took like four and a half months or so. And I know some people who have took like five months to get back. So I applied in April and I got my EAD approval in August. I started working on August 19th. Um, I think like a week after 
I got my approval. It was good that I was work like my employer was accommodating of the fact that you know OPT can take a lot of time. And Hirsh Kosar, that Indian guy, was going through the same thing that time. And just communicating that with your employer really works out. It took four months. That's like way too much time for it to take that much for a process, but it came through. and i was good to go now comes the stem extension so stem extension is a little different in opt you are still at the university while you are applying for it you can just go to the iss to help you out and you can get a double check with everyone my opt was getting over on 8th of july 2020 i knew by this time my company my employer already applied for my h1b and my h1b picked up in the lottery remember it was picked up in the lottery it wasn't approved getting picked up in the lottery doesn't necessarily mean that it will it, it will get approved the documents and the backup documents which your lawyer puts in should make sense so i applied for my stem extension that is the 2 years extension over opt luckily my lottery was picked up and i was like you know i was comfortable sitting down and waiting until the last moment like hey i'll apply for my stem extension that's no big deal i applied on a month a month and few days before my deadline so july 8th was my deadline july 2020 and june 2nd is when i submitted all the necessary documents that is i765 and there's a bunch of other forms which you have to submit and there's a list which i'm going to put that as well and you have to submit that to your iss so that they can authorize that yeah you are good to go and they will also send you new i20 saying that yeah this is stem extension approved and what's the status like just to give you a new identity to apply to the university or to apply to the uscis so i submitted my documents on june 2nd and during that time because covid was on the peak last year during that time it was taking too much time for iss to get back to me so my i20 i received my i20 by june 22nd and july 8th that's not too far apart okay that's two to three weeks apart i would say 8 plus 8 16 so that's two weeks apart and uh, that's that's just not too enough time for them to give me approval right away okay so i apply on june 22nd itself and i get a notice that uh, they have received my case in on june 23rd it is good because the uscis has a office in phoenix it, it takes a lot less time for them to uh, send a receivable notice uh, usually even if you're sending it to in texas or i think san francisco has one office or somewhere it doesn't take too long to get a, a like a notice that they have received your documents but once they receive your document it's going to take some time to process it right so that process was going through now my anxiety was going up a little bit like i was already late my status gets over on july 8th what am i going to do now it was all a wait game i was just waiting for it on july 13th i think i saw a message coming on my phone that hey there's a change on your case you can check it online so i went to uscis website put my receipt number and i see it didn't say denied it said something else on july 16th i see the document in my hand i see a post i take out the post i open it up and i see that there's a i797c which is a rejection notice i was like what the hell happened like uh am i uh, did i just get rejected for stem extension what did i do wrong uh, i was like all right this this is some sort of mistake you know i'll i'll try to figure it out and of course i can apply again right like in my mind at that time i was like all right i'll just apply again for this so i come to my apartment and i showed to my roommate and i started looking it up like hey what does i797c means and can i apply for stem extension again now because 8th of july was my last date uh, i was a little skeptical about it but i was optimistic at that time i looked it up online and it says that you cannot apply for stem extension once your deadline is over so my opt is over and if my stem extension is denied after it i just can't apply i'm like what the fuck so uscis took two and a half weeks to just get back to me to say that i have been rejected and i was i was really nervous about it that night i slept well i was like you know i'll figure it out tomorrow in the morning while i was doing my business i looked it up on my phone and started reading a lot about it and that's the time when i got really anxious that's the time when i got really nervous like Ah oh, shit! This I think means that I lost my stem extension. I applied first of all a little too late, and second, 
when I was going through my forms, seeing like why did I not get my stem extension? What happened was in the I-765 form on the first page, there's a checkbox which asks like, are you applying for OPT? Are you applying for stem extension? And I didn't mark that checkbox. I had everything prepared. Everything was good to go except for that checkbox. And because of that checkbox, I got rejected. And that made me that Friday. So July 17th was the Friday when I went to the office. And in the morning, I first of all emailed ISS, that is International Student Services at Purdue. And I emailed my HR. I told her like, hey, this is the case. What should I be doing? I am a little skeptical that I'm out of status. So I don't even know if I should be working right now. Um, you know, just being in this space so much, like I've seen some people getting into this kind of problems. So it's always better to just reach out to your international student services and your HR if you're working during that time. I reach out to her. She gets back to me quickly like, hey, I forwarded this to the lawyer. Let me check with her like what's going on. We don't want you to be working if you're out of status. She was really nice about it, really comforting. But to get to a lawyer, like even if a company's hired lawyer full time, it takes a little while because they're always busy in something. So I get to it and I'm sitting there and I'm like shitting my pants almost like, oh shit, am I out of status? Would I have to go back? So I was a little optimistic more about that. Hey, my lottery is picked up uh, for H1B. So my case is already in. I haven't got an approval notice, but it should look positive. Just in case if everything goes to shit and I'm out of status, I'll just leave the country right now and just come back after my H1B stamping. And that would take a while. So I would be gone for the, from the country for at least six to seven months seeing how COVID was during that time. So again, I'm reaching out to ISIS. I'm calling them. They are not able to get back to me. They're like, hey, just email and we'll see how it goes then. And um, I'm texting my HR like, hey, did you get any status update from the lawyers? She's like, hey, the lawyers just got back to me. They're saying that they'll give me a call at 3 p.m. And it is a Friday, so I'm off early, like we usually do 7 to 4. And I got out by 2.30 that day. And I'm trying to sleep. I'm trying to take a nap because I'm like just so, so frustrated. I didn't sleep well last night. So I'm trying to take a nap. I'm trying to calm down. And the HR calls me up and tells them like, Hey, Parth, looks like you are completely okay. Uh, and I was like, all right, that sounds perfect. So what the HR did was HR put together a total case and gave it to the lawyers and told her, hey, this is the case. Because I sent like a very comprehensive mail to her saying that, hey, this is the notice which I got. This is my all my I-20s. These are all my documents. So the, once the lawyer saw that, she figured out like, hey, this person should be on cap cap right now. Now, let me tell you what cap cap is. So if you're on OPT, not first of all, not every course has STEM extension, okay? If you're on OPT um, and if your employer applies for H1B right away, then you have like this three months of period or two months of period between your end of OPT and October 1st when your H1B kicks in. So between that time, a student is on cap cap. So what cap cap is like when you are approved for your H1B, you get onto cap gap. So you're never out of status. So you don't have to go fly back to your country and come back in. You could still stay in the country and your H1B will just kick in on the on uh, October 1st. That's when it kicks in. I took a deep breath. She sent me some more reading material on what cap gap is. I read about cap gap and I was so, so relaxed. Luckily, by 24th July is when I got approval notice saying that, hey, your H1B is approved. So I calmed down even more that day. But the point of me making this video is just that I I have been in this like space and I've been helping students and I have all the resources. Even then I got really nervous and scared. And it was my mistake at the end of the day that I did not fill up that checkbox at I-765. I should have double checked, triple checked. Maybe I should have asked a friend of mine to check it for me. And um, yeah, I just got lucky because my H1B got picked up. If it wouldn't have gotten picked up, I would have been in a flux. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. If you have been in this kind of situation before, please comment down below and tell me how did you solve it. And um, yeah, thank you so much guys for watching. And until then, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.